lovelies, I hope you're all well. Today I am going to be doing a special review for you and this will be on At Home Airbrush Makeup System by Temp2. This is it here. A little Temp2, please excuse all my finger marks. It's very shiny so it does get marked really easily. I've been always really interested in airbrush makeup and when Temp2 got in contact with me saying that they would like to send me um, a sample of their system and some of their makeup to try out, I was very, very happy to do that because, you know, I'm curious just like everyone else and I also looked up on the internet, there aren't that many reviews of it. So I'm very happy to provide you guys with as comprehensive a review as I possibly can. I've been using this all week. I've tried it out, um, you know, a couple of different ways and um, worn it throughout the day to see how it lasts and everything like that. So I hope that this will be helpful for you guys who are curious about airbrushing. A little bit of background, as you know, um, at the moment, airbrushing, makeup, especially, you know, your foundation is um, the most popular way that makeup artists and all other professionals get that flawless finish. You will read about airbrushes being used on the catwalk, in magazines, on celebrities, and it's the best way that we currently have of providing that look of perfect skin. Apart from airbrushing, a lot of things say that they do that, like you can get those um, foundations with aerosol cans that say that they give you the same finish. Also something like the 187 brush from MAC where you stipple it on claims to you know, give you that airbrush finish because you're doing that same thing of um, making the pixels. Because there aren't going to be any streaks when you um, spray the airbrush makeup on your face, it gives the most natural look and you use the minimal amount of makeup uh, for the maximum amount of coverage. Up till now, the airbrush systems on the market have been created specifically for professionals and targeted at makeup artists. The systems range from, you know, like $300 or pounds up till, you know, up to a thousand pounds. So the only people that have been able to invest in that are mostly professionals because they know that you can get their money back. I mean, for example, doing bridal work, Someone who does airbrushing can charge up to twice as much as another makeup artist doing it in the traditional way. I believe that Temp2 are the first people to bring out an airbrush system for makeup that is targeted at the consumer. It's targeted at someone that has no professional qualifications in makeup. Um, you don't need any training to use the system and it's super easy to use. Currently it's being sold through Sephora and um, I think it's only Sephora in the USA. I'm not sure if they have it in Canada and I'm not sure how you would get it in the UK. I've looked up on the Sephora website. I think um, you can maybe get it to ship to certain countries, but I'm not 100%, so I shall try and clarify that in the sidebar for you guys. When you first purchase the system, it comes in a box like this. You get the system and then behind that is um, a leaflet and a DVD with instructions which is really useful because it shows you exactly how to do it. This is what the compressor and airbrush look like. They're really dinky, I thought it would be much bigger than this but it's very very small and very sleek. You then have to purchase the makeup separately and they have a range of foundations, blushes and highlighters and I shall put all the prices in the sidebar for that. This is my first time using airbrush makeup. I have been airbrushed before but I've never done it myself or on myself and um, it's been really interesting for me to use it. I have to say that it really is much simpler than I thought it was and much simpler than people make it out to be. There's really no way you can make many mistakes so I think anyone would be able to do it. So if you're interested in finding out about airbrush makeup and how you can use this system at home to do your own makeup or your friend's makeup, then do stay tuned for this um, review and tutorial. I shall try and make it as comprehensive as I possibly can and I hope this is helpful to you guys if you're considering purchasing the system. Of course, it's not cheap at all. It is pretty expensive. So I always think it's helpful to get as many opinions from different sources as you can. And um, of course, this was sent to me for free but I have to reiterate that I'm always very, very honest with you guys in my reviews. There's really no point in me lying, you know, I've really got the system. If it was rubbish, I would tell you it was rubbish. I'm not going to lose out anything from that. So I just want to reiterate that. I know everyone's been panicking with the FTC guidelines, but I always tell you guys where I get my products from and what I honestly think of them. So, yeah, nothing to worry about there. I do recommend that you conceal anything that you need to before you 
airbrush your face because if you start to use it as a concealer, I've tried, you know, going closer to the skin and trying to conceal a spot. Quite often you end up getting a little bit too much product on the skin and even though it does conceal because it has quite good coverage, it can end up looking like, you know, you do have a lot of makeup on your skin. And also because this makeup isn't made to kind of blend, once you start blending it, it smears and, um, well, there's not really much point airbrushing if you're gonna start blending up your fingers. I've put on a little concealer on my blemishes and also a little bit under my eyes. Now I'm going to show you how you set up the system. So the first thing you're gonna take is your AirPod foundation. This comes in a pack of two. First thing you want to do is just take a look at the end and you just lift off a little piece of plastic here. And you can see the nozzle in there. It's very, very fine, but that is where the product is going to come out of. Next, you want to open it up and you look here and you will see this little red valve. This is where the temp, temp to um, system connects and this is where the product comes out of. So when you look inside the little chrome cap here, you will see a sticker right there. You want to peel that away and stuck there is this little poking thing. You want to take the stick and poke it through the valve and hold it for three to five seconds. I just like to kind of poke it up and down but make sure to hold it upright, you don't want to hold it sideways. This one is in the shade Ivory 002, but it's far too yellow for me. It's about the right kind of lightness, but it doesn't match my skin tone, so you'll probably be able to see that on the video. But bearing that in mind, you can go to Sephora and maybe try out the shades for yourself, whereas I had to, of course, do it on the internet. So, you know, it's a bit of a hit and miss every time you order shades on the internet when you can't try them on your skin. So this is the foundation, and what I'm going to do is just shake it really, really well. This is um, a foundation that's a silicone base in water. I think that's true. If not, I'll put up an annotation. And with all airbrush foundations, if you watch any videos like I've been watching Encore's videos, they'll say that you have to shake them really well. So once that's all shaken up, and we've got the system all plugged in, and um, mine has an American plug, but I've just put it into an English adapter, and it works perfectly fine. And then what we're going to do is, on that knob, Set it to start, which is right in the middle, and that's uh, what's recommended for foundation application. Put in our foundation. This is really easy to do. You just take it and slot it in, like so. Now we're going to turn the compressor on just by pressing this button right at the top. And as you can hear, it is quite loud. I've had a lot of compressors that are much louder than this. So this air will come out. And it's not too strong, <laughs> you don't want to like direct it towards your eye because it does feel a bit strange, but it's not uncomfortable. And um, none of the makeup is coming out until you press this little valve. So what they recommend to do is to hold the wand, or I don't know what you call this. Um, you want to hold the wand like you do a pen, and put your index finger on the little lever here, which is um, what controls the makeup. As you slide it back a little, a very small amount of product will come out. And then if you slide it back all the way, more product will come out. And you can see a little yellow dab there. The closer you are, the more intense the colour will be and the smaller the area that you're covering. So let me get my hair out of the way here. And what I like to do is just go around in circular motions like this. All around. Now I'm not doing it yet, I'm just showing you. I kind of go around the edge and then work my way through the middle. You can feel the air blowing, um, but you won't feel the makeup going on. Um, you'll just start to smell it because the moment it doesn't smell like anything, it smells like ah, as soon as you start to press it, you will smell the really slight. It's a very pleasant scent of the makeup, so let's just start angling it downwards about six inches away from my face. So now the product is going on, and I'm going around in circles. Nice, even circles. And you really can't feel it, it doesn't feel wet, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. The most important thing that I have found is that you want to build it up in layers. You don't want to go and keep going round and round and round. Because you are putting, you know, a wet product on the skin. So I like to do a layer and then just kind of go over it and dry it in between. And let me just switch this off. Um, another thing that I recommend is while you're doing it, just close your eyes. And when you get to the center, um, like the area around your nose, try just breathing outwards because you don't want to inhale all the particles. Also, the first time I did it, because I was so unused to having the air on my face, I was 
kind of making faces. If you do that, then you're not going to get a very smooth finish around the eyes, you know, if you're squinting, because it won't go into those lines, and when you look normally, you'll see those lines, and it'll make you look old and horrible. <laughs> so what I found, it gave me wrinkles. But you really just have to relax, just close my eyes, and just, you know, try and make no expressions at all, because if you're smiling, you can get the little lines here. Just completely relax. So let's just do another layer. And it has a really nice, kind of powdery, baby scent, almost. So now I've stopped the product only coming out, I'm just going to dry that layer. And you want to just keep going for as long as you think you need. Like, for as much coverage as you need. You're completely in control, it's completely buildable, you can just put a very fine mist, or you can keep going, adding layers, and adding to sections. So once I've done two layers, I'm quite happy with that. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see on the camera, but you know, I have freckles and all around here and I mean around my nose and here as well and um, because I've put on such a sheer layer, they're not going to go away. If I want to, I can keep going on and on, but as with any product, even with airbrush makeup, if you keep building and building the product, it is going to start to look like you have makeup on the skin. At the moment, mm, it looks more like maybe I've put on a tinted moisturiser, definitely not foundation, but the coverage is much better than that of a tinted moisturiser. It's a very natural finish, uh, it's not luminous, it's not totally matte, it's kind of in between. So what I'm going to do is just put on a final little bit around my T-zone because that's where I get most of my redness infections, like around the nostrils, my nose, sometimes my forehead, just in the centre. And then try and going in at angle, it's not spraying, as you can see. And um, then trying, I try to kind of go in at the side just so I can get the areas just around here and here because if you're going in for the front, if you think about it, everything's going to be lying flat and your face has contours. I have a lot more coverage down the centre of my face because I kind of targeted it there and I got a little bit closer. But overall, I think it has a really nice finish if you don't put too much, which you really don't need to, but when I first tried it out, I was like, oh, well, let's see how far this can go and how much coverage it can provide. You can get there to full coverage, but I would not recommend it because it does start looking like you have a lot of foundation on. Airbrush makeup is all about looking natural and flawless and like you just woke up and you're radiant. It's not about looking like you've piled on the foundation, you know, you can do that with anything else. You don't have to invest in a system like this. Um, it does save a lot of time. I just normally do two layers and then a quick one in the centre. It takes me less than a minute. No blending. You know, that's me done. Just keep in mind, this is a little too yellow for my skin. For example, like where I've added the extra coverage here, my nose is just slightly more yellow than my chin area where I haven't airbrushed as much. And also, I know a lot of people get scared that, you know, oh, it's going to stain your clothes and your hair. As you can see, my clothes are not stained. My hairline is not stained, it's so fine that maybe a few of the front baby hairs look a little bit lighter, but if I just kind of brush over them, it's absolutely fine. So now I'm just going to do the blush, and all you have to do to disconnect it is press the little button that's on here on the side, and take it out. Sometimes it can be a bit tough, that time it was okay. And when you take it out, just make sure to put the chrome cap back on to store it, and I have the little poker in there. Um, they say if you haven't used it for a couple of days, just you know, open the seal up again. But make sure before you start spraying, you put it on the less setting, it's right at the top, just so that you don't get such a large concentration through. And this blush is in Pale Pink 401. So what I'm going to do is turn the system back on. I'm just going to check that I've put it in properly, just spray a little on my hand. As you can see, some of the product came out. Let's begin with a blush. And keep going in circles on the cheek and then just pull it back. And the same with the other one in a little circle. And you're going to do a few layers. I found the blush strangely is a little more watery so you can see a bit more of a sheen on the skin as soon as you put it on. So it's nice to kind of do one cheek and then the other to let it dry in between the layers. Now I've done a little stronger for you guys for the camera so you can see it because it's a really subtle pink colour. And there's that blush. It looks more natural than powder because it does have that very slight sheen and it actually just looks like your cheeks are naturally flushed. It doesn't look like you have blush on. Just so it looks like the rosiness is showing through. Really, really natural. 
I really like the blush application with this. And the last thing I'm going to do is take our highlighter, shake it, and um, just to remind you, this is the uh, Champagne 301 colour. And I'm going to have that on less as well because I don't want to put too much shimmer on. I want to go quite close again, but not too close so you have like a definite line. But we're just going to go in a C shape on top of the cheekbone here, on top of where you put the blush. And I think that's enough there. If you want a really subtle glow all over your face, because this highlighter is so um, iridescent, doesn't have like proper like shimmer or sparkle particles, you can just kind of glow over your face like this. Do it with the foundation, and that just gives you a really subtle glow. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's like a fresh luminosity if you think that the finish is too matte. I actually really like it. I have to confess that I was expecting miracles. You know, everyone's like, oh. Um, airbrushing is fantastic. It takes all your blemishes. You look absolutely flawless. I think that is true to an extent, but at the same time, if you have a lot of things to cover, like if you have freckles, and you have to just keep going on and on, it does end up looking like you're wearing very heavy makeup, and it can look cakey and all the same stuff that you get with your normal foundations. Um, of course, it does save a lot of time. It's, I think, very easy to do. I think it's easier to airbrush yourself than to learn how to, you know, use a stippling brush, blend everything in beautifully. This way, it just saves you all the hassle. Like, if you put on your concealer and you don't do it very well, you know, not the best job of concealer you've ever done because you're going to airbrush a thin layer of foundation over it anyway. It will make your concealer look better. It will make the concealer disappear pretty much. The blush looks so natural, I, I really like the way it does that because most of the time you know you put it on and it's like a circle and then you're like trying to blend it out. This way it will never end up looking like that, it just looks like a natural radiance and a glow through your skin. The same with the highlighter, it's so much more subtle than using one of those you know, MSFs from MAC or anything like that. As for the finish itself, um, after you do it there is a slight tackiness to your face. So I would recommend, you know, taking a loose powder and setting it. I know they have the finishing powder in the temperature range, but unfortunately I don't have any of that to show you. I've just been using a regular finishing powder, such as the e.l.f. High Definition Powder. That's worked really well. If you feel like you've done your foundation, but you have really oily skin, and because this has slightly tacky consistency, it makes me feel like, oh, you know, it's not going to last as long on my oily skin. So you can put a little bit of something like um, MAC MSF Natural over it, which has a little extra coverage, and will set it as well. I honestly do really like it. I think it's super easy for anyone to use. You don't have to kind of control the number of drops you're going to use. You use as much as you need. The only thing I don't like about it is the price. I think it's $255 for the system itself and then um, I think about $50 for the two foundations and $30 and $35 for the blush and highlighter, which is pretty pricey. Of course the problem is that you get each one holds 8.5 milliliters, so in total you get um, 17 milliliters of foundation for you know, $50. And uh, for like this one, most other foundation brands, etc., you get 30 milliliters for around that kind of price. But then again, you are using less with airbrush makeup, so it's probably in the long run better for your skin. And um, they say that one little pod lasts you about a month if you use it every day. So I shall have to come back and report to you <laughs> how long it lasts me. If you have the money and you're interested in um, airbrushing and you think that, you know, you're always doing your makeup in a rush and it ends up looking really sloppy like in the morning before you go to work, if it's worth for you to get rid of the hassle and, you know, buying brushes and sanitizing them and all of that stuff, um, then it will be worth it for you to purchase something like this. It saves you so much time within a minute, maybe a minute and a half if you're doing the blush and highlight. You can get everything done. It's all clean. You don't need to sanitize it. You just pop it in and out. It's, of course, the most hygienic way of doing makeup because there's just no way any bacteria can be transferred onto your skin. For people with acne who use a lot of foundation to mask their imperfections, um, they can get away with putting a little bit of concealer and just airbrushing their face. 
and not only do they know that it's not gonna um, have any bacteria in it that could make their acne worse but also it means that they're gonna wear less makeup overall you get so much more coverage with so much less makeup than you do with normal foundations so yeah I hope that was uh, useful to you guys I'm sorry this is gonna be quite a long video but I really wanted to share with you my honest opinion even though it's a little mixed I just wish it, the system was cheaper and so therefore would be more accessible to people. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.